in this video, we are going to go over the top five facts and or skills you need to know about organic chemistry for the Regents Chemistry exam. So let's get started. So here is number one. You have to know the definition for the word isomer. Isomer means something this is the same and something is different. When you have two or more compounds with the same molecular formula, but the structures are different, they have different properties and different names. So you need to be able to recognize that and keep in mind that if you flip a molecule or you bend the chain, that is not an isomer. So let me give you a few examples. So let's take a look at this. I have a compound here, and one of these is an isomer of that compound. So if the C double bond O was on the left hand side instead of the right hand side, and I still had the arrangement of the carbons and the hydrogens, that's like an isomer. An isomer means an entirely different structure. So what I suggest is you just go ahead and take an in atom inventory first. You have three carbons, you have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. So your isomer has to have three carbons. If we go through, all of these have three. Let's see if they all have six hydrogens. This one has too many. The next one, that's still good. The third one, too many. And the last one, good. That also has six. So now it comes down to oxygen. The second molecule here has to be an isomer of the one above because in this fourth choice, you have two oxygens instead of just one. So isomer, the same molecular formula, but different structures. To make sure you understand what I mean by bend, if I have, let's say, a four carbon chain, and we have all hydrogens here. So this would be butane, and you're looking for an isomer, and you see something like this on your paper. These two molecules are exactly the same because a bend does not count. So first thing is, of course, to count the longest chain. They're both four. They both would have the same number of hydrogens, but the structures are the same. Don't get tricked or fooled by a bend or a flip. Here's a fact that you need to know when it comes to organic molecules. Your alkanes are considered saturated hydrocarbons, meaning you have all single carbon carbon bonds. Your alkenes and your alkynes are known as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Those double or triple bond carbon-carbon um, bonds between them can be opened up. It's a fact. You need to know it for the Regents exam. When it comes to organic chemistry, you must look and have open the three reference tables to be successful. That's table P, table Q, and table R. P gives you prefixes, which means you count the number of carbon atoms in the chain, and the prefix tells you how many carbon atoms. Table Q is all about hydrocarbons, carbon and hydrogen atoms only. We just went through that alkanes are saturated, and alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. And then there is reference table R. That gives you a list of other classes of compounds that have some other elements that are part of the compound. We are going to look at each of these so that you know what information is there. So here it is, table P, your prefixes. It tells you the number of carbon atoms that are part of the chain. Then we head to reference table Q. For reference table Q, not only do you have the name of each, the ending here, the A-N-E, the E-N-E, and the Y-N-E, tell me whether I have all single bonds between carbons, one double bond, 
or one triple bond. And the general formula would be if I'm asked, for example, let's say, what is the formula for butene? I use the, the four, right, from the prefix from reference table P. So it's going to be C4. And then as far as the number of H's, that's where the 2N would come in. 2 times 4 is 8. So you can use these general formulas to determine the molecular formula based on the number of carbons. And don't ignore that you have some structural formula information here that you can model if you're asked to draw something with more than two carbons, but it's just hydrogens along with it. Let's move to reference table R. Table R gives us any other elements besides our carbons and hydrogens that are part of an organic molecule. And by the way, remember organic means the study of carbon containing compounds. So with your halocarbons or your halides, obviously from the name we would figure out you're talking about one of the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, or more than that, for example. Now here, these examples aren't totally structures. They are what's called condensed structural formulas, or in the case down here with the C double bonds O, combination of a structural and a condensed structural formula. What you want to keep in mind is carbon always forms four bonds. Hydrogen always one bond, any of your halogens one bond, and your oxygen two bonds, and your nitrogens three. So you can think of this condensed formula almost like a zip file in a computer. When files are too big and you need to send them in, in an email, you want to condense them, you put them in a zip file. And then when the receiver gets your email, they double click on it and the files essentially open up. It's like a folder opening up. So if you want to draw this, the structure, you're going to draw the, always draw the carbon first and then draw the bonds around it. So this first carbon has three hydrogens and then the fourth bond is bonded to the next carbon. And you can see the next carbon has a hydrogen and a chlorine doesn't matter if you put it above and below, but at H, one bond, the CL and the other. And finally, the third carbon has the three H's. So here is the entire molecule on your right and the condensed molecule on your left. You can also see that some of these names have numbers. I call those numbers the parking spaces. So the whole idea is you are directed then where that atom besides a carbon or hydrogen goes on the molecule. So 2-chloropropane means that chlorine was on the second carbon. 1-propanol means the OH is on the end. 2-pentanone down here means this C double bond O is part of the second carbon. And when you have numbers in front of the uh, name, it tells you then, it's a, it's a dead giveaway that you have um, at least one other isomer for that structure. Now, most of reference table R has to do with oxygen along with carbons and hydrogens. And these next four groups all have one oxygen as part of the molecule. For alcohols, you're talking an OH group, and the OL ending tells me it's an alcohol. Now, don't confuse it with a base. A base is a metal, like NaOH, sodium hydroxide. This is OH with carbons and hydrogens, which makes it an organic compound. An ether, oxygen is actually part of the carbon chain. So you name ethers very interestingly because you're going to name it based on the number of carbons on either side of the oxygen. For aldehydes, you also have an oxygen and a hydrogen on the sometimes, well, aldehydes, it's always on the end of the molecule. Alcohols, that OH can be anywhere. But the problem is you have an oxygen and a hydrogen. 
if you see the condensed formula for this, it's going to be shown as CHO instead of COH, not to confuse it with an alcohol. The other thing is that propanal, AL ending, means it's an aldehyde, and you have this C double bond O on the end of the molecule. Propanol with an OL ending meant it was a hydroxy group. Just the subtle change here with the order of oxygen and H makes it an entirely different structure. Ketones have a C double bond O, but the placement of that C double bond O is always in the middle of the molecule. So you can have isomers easily between aldehydes and ketones because the C double bond O is in the middle for a ketone and for an aldehyde it's always on the end. An ether has no choice, it has to be in the middle because it's part of the carbon linkage and an alcohol, it can be anywhere. Those OH minuses can be on, I'm sorry, OH minus, OH can be on the end of a molecule or anywhere in the middle and the same thing with halides. My halogens can be anywhere on the molecule. All right, let's get through the rest of these. The next two molecules, that's going to be our organic acid and our ester have in common, they both have two oxygens on the molecule. Except for an ester, you have a C double bond O and an O in the middle of the molecule. And for an organic acid, the C double bond O with an H is on the end of the molecule. They get named separately. Any acid, including organic acids, the word acid is there. And for esters, it is O8, O-A-T-E. The other thing I wanted to point out with organic acids, well, in fact, let me go through aldehyde, ketone, organic acid, and ester again, that the condensed functional group for an aldehyde, this would be CHO instead of COH, so we don't confuse it with an alcohol. A ketone, it would be CO as part of the condensed structural formula. For an organic acid, you would see COOH. And for an ester, you're going to see COO with more C's on the left and on the right. So it is pattern recognition. Don't do anything without having the reference table open. And let's look at the last two. So your amine and your amide, these are going to be nitrogen containing compounds and it's real easy to see the difference because with an amide you also have oxygen and the other thing that makes it a little bit easier is the word amine or amide is in the name so this is an account of reference table R practice with the tables open and let's go back to our countdown Okay, so naming an organic compound when you're given the structure, here's an example of regents. So you're given this formula and you're asked to name it. First of all, if you take a look, you have nitrogen, which is more than just carbons and hydrogen. So you're going to go to reference table R. And if you count up the number of carbons, you have one, two, three, four. So you know it's going to be but right, which is the prefix, but are we dealing with an amine or are we dealing with an amide? Let's go check. Oh, on reference table R, it's easy to see we're dealing with an amine and not an amide because we don't have oxygen. So with that in mind, let's go back. We are going to cross out choices one and two, and then it's just the question of is it one or four? Anytime you're dealing with the numbers, you use the lowest number possible. In other words, you count the carbon chain in two directions, from left, left to right, one, two, three, four, and then from right to left, one, two, three, four. Since one comes before four, we're gonna use one 
butamine, and the answer here would have been 3. So use those tables when you're naming. I'm going to go ahead and when we're done with this, attach a video that shows you a little bit more in depth naming organic compounds from the structures. In the same Regents exam in January 2019, not only did you have to name an organic compound, but in the back of the test, you had to draw a structure from the name. Let's go over that. Real simple, remember you're using the reference tables. First thing is you see the prefix hex. Hex means six, so you're gonna draw six carbons all across. One, two, three, four, five, and six. A and E tells me that I have all single bonds. The ethyl means I'm gonna have a CH3, CH2 group known as a branch, and I'm gonna put that on the third carbon. So if I count one, two, three, I'm going to stick that branch here. So that's two carbons, a C, and then another C. And now I have to fill in all of my H's. I'm actually going to redraw it so you can see it. So here I have three ethyl hexane. Remember, carbon always has four bonds. Hydrogen has one. We're going on to number when it comes to organic, you need to also memorize the types of organic reactions that you are responsible for. You need to know what the class of compounds that would react together and what that might also look like if you're given the structures. I'm going to put a list of them and make sure that you go over um, a study sheet or go and find them and draw them out and know them for the test. Here it is. So for example, for esterification, we are talking about an alcohol and an organic acid forming an ester plus water. So you have to not only know which one's the alcohol and which one is the acid, but recognize the molecules and then recognize an ester and the other product, which is water. You need to do that for each one of these. Look them up, write them out, and remember them. This ends the five. If you are watching this, check out a little bit more on naming compounds. Good luck.